Hello again, everyone. Uh, this is a follow-up video uh, to the demonstration that we provided the other day. And uh, it's the Regenx generators uh, and Regenx quantum motor black box uh, illustration. So, um, Basically, we have our Regenx, we have our conventional generator and our Regenx generator and our Regenx quantum motor uh, in the black box. And our input is mechanical drive shaft power. And our output is electric power. Uh, for the conventional generator, it's electric output power and it's um, uh, also, negative work. Uh, negative work is not factored in into generator efficiency calculations. Uh, and the Regenx generator and its output is electric output power and positive work. And the Regenx quantum motor, uh, its output is positive work. So our input to our uh, all of our generators in quantum motor and after this video I'll do a little um, a follow-up demonstration um, so the input is the mechanical power in the drive shaft and we start all of our uh, demonstrations with a drive shaft that is at rotational equilibrium and um, a drive shaft that is at, I'm just looking for a drive shaft, but I don't seem to have one. Uh, nevertheless, a drive shaft that is at rotational equilibrium is rotating at, in one direction at a constant speed. And in order for that drive shaft um, to be at rotational equilibrium, the net torque acting on the drive shaft must be zero. So uh, a drive shaft that is uh, not turning, uh, the, the torque and the speed in that drive shaft are both zero, and a drive shaft that is rotating at rotational equilibrium the torque is zero and the mechanical power in that drive shaft at rotational equilibrium would of course be zero. And um, no work uh, can, be per can be performed at rotational equilibrium. Uh, obviously with an electric vehicle, work is performed um, because there's a large amount of uh, kinetic energy stored in the EV and it's used um, to uh, recharge a battery while decelerating a car. But no, no sustained work can be performed uh, with a drive shaft that has uh, zero watts of mechanical input power in it. So, uh, all conventional electric generators require mechanical input power when generating electricity because they produce generator armature reaction or negative work. And uh, the textbook explanation for uh, generator armature reaction is the following. In the case of a generator, for example, when the induced current is caused to flow through a load connected to the generator, electric energy is expended. The field produced by the current, the electromagnetic field produced uh, by the current around the generator coils, is always in a direction so that it reacts with the main generator field to oppose the turning action of the prime mover driving the generator. So the, the field 
produces a counter electromagnetic torque and it, uh, it opposes the turning action of the prime mover. Thus, the greater the electric energy supplied to the load, the greater is the reaction and in turn, the greater is the mechanical energy required from the prime mover. Energy must be supplied to the generator at the same rate that it's being taken from the generator. So mechanical energy, when the generator is, is delivering electric output power, when the generator is, conventional generator is placed on load and, and generating electric output power, additional mechanical power must be supplied to the generator from the prime mover in order to keep the generator uh, going and to main, maintain the output of the generator. Now, uh, the conventional generator, if it's delivering 10 watts uh, to a load, it needs at least 10 watts of mechanical input power in the drive shaft, 100 watts, uh, at least 100 watts of mechanical power, and so on and so on. The Regenex generator, on the other hand, the Regenex generator requires zero additional mechanical watts when it's placed on load and when it's delivering power because it does not produce generator armature reaction. So when the, when the Regenex generator is placed on load and when it's delivering electric output power, the mechanical input power, which is zero watts of rotational equilibrium, remains at zero watts and, and or it goes below zero watts because the Regenex generator is performing positive work and accelerating the system. And uh, if we look at the output of the Regenex generator, whether it's 10 watts, if the Regenex generator is delivering 10 watts, we need zero watts of mechanical power in our drive shaft. So uh, zero watts of additional mechanical power above what's required to establish rotational equilibrium. And if we're delivering 100 watts, the same thing applies, zero watts of additional mechanical power is required. And uh, just speculating, if we get to a megawatt, uh, the same, num the same uh, reaction applies where the Regenex generator always requires zero additional mechanical watts when it's placed on load. And the Regenex quantum motor, when it is performing positive work and increasing the kinetic energy of the system, uh, in this case, uh, 47 joules of increased rotational kinetic energy, zero watts of mechanical power is required by the Regenex quantum motor. So if we look at, uh, hopefully we will get to the uh, one megawatt electric generator output scenario with time. And with regards to the energy related carbon dioxide emissions from 1990 to 2050, you can see the natural gas um, emissions here, the gasoline and diesel emissions here, and the coal projected emissions here. Now, uh, if we add up the net total of all the CO2 that is projected to be produced, between um, 2020 
2020 and 2050, the total is 480 billion metric tons of CO2 and air pollution in the next 30 years, or about a trillion pounds of CO2 and air pollution in the next 30 years. Now, if when we remove uh, generator armature reaction from the coal, fossil fuel, natural gas, uh, electricity generation paradigm, if we can replace all the, uh, all the generators in the world with regen X generators from 2025 or 2020 to 2035, uh, we can bring the CO2 and air pollution down significantly. And that number will be sustained um, uh, essentially um, basically as long as the fossil fuels, uh, the life of the fossil fuels exists. So, if we have the effect of regenx generators and regenx quantum motors in electricity generation and in electric mobility from 2022 to 2035 is 100% removal of the CO2 and air pollution produced during electricity generation. And I'm not talking about the idling part of, of uh, electricity uh, production, I'm talking about the actual generation part, and uh, up to or more than 50% uh, removal of CO2 and air pollution in internal combustion engines and in electric mobility. Remember that uh, while the claim is that electric vehicles are non-polluting if they're getting their energy from coal, um, uh, fossil fuels and natural gas, then their, their input energy is indeed polluting. And uh, the hope is that with the Regenx generators uh, we can reduce the carbon dioxide emissions to negligible levels by 2035 while we transition over to sustainable technologies that don't rely on fossil fuels such as um, wind and solar and um, hydroelectric. So coming up after this video is uh, a brief uh, demonstration again and what we'll be looking at what we're going to be wanting to confirm is that when the regenx generator is placed on load, the prime mover does not require any additional input power, which means that it's not supplying any additional mechanical power to the drive shaft, and the regenx quantum motor is performing positive work, increasing the kinetic energy of the system, but it also is not requiring any additional uh, input power. So stay tuned, we're coming up for part two. Thanks.